Hello and welcome back to Gallatin Parkway. Today's the first episode of the new layout extension. Now I'm going to show you exactly what I'm planning to do. Um, look at a few plans on the computer to start with first and then we'll move out into the garage for a further look. So um, my plan for the layout extension is to have a board that's 10 foot by one and a half foot and it's going to be based on loosely Rumney uh, in South Wales. Now this is a valley station terminus which sits at the top of the Romney Valley and we will have a little bit of a closer look now. Um, essentially you've got a station here and then you've got some sidings there, DMU sidings for storing DMUs in. So it will link to the main layout, we'll have the track run in, you have a station there, there's going to be a run round loop so that we can have a locomotive with four coaches per was common in Rumney back in the early 2000s and then storage for all of my multiple units which are very much a neglected part of the fleet but they will all sit in these sidings here. So I've drawn up the plan on any rail so I'll show you that to begin with and this is basically what we've come up with. So um, the track plan essentially will have a station um, with a platform there. We've got a bay platform which may or may not be incorporated I'm unsure as of yet and then three sidings. I've got rather simply then a line coming in, another line for the run round loop. Uh, there's a head shunt here that will be big enough to allow you to run a railhead treatment train into and out of should you require. And also you'll be able to leave the railhead treatment train in one of the head shunt sidings here. All of this is going to be continued using Pico Code 100 track per the rest of the layout just to keep the theme right. And then from a scenery perspective, it's quite fluid. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet, but we'll come up with some ideas as we progress into the build. So this is essentially what we're going to have. And um, hopefully it'll be quite interesting. I'll show you some images of the prototype just so that we can get an idea of how I think uh, it should look. So I've just jumped over to Flickr here onto my favorite stream. And um, let's have a little look through some of the photos. So this is what the carriage side has looked like. Uh, back in the early 2000s, often stacked with locomotives and coaches or diesel multiple units. Um, this is the kind of rolling stock we'd have on the layout. So I have um, worked recently to respray one of the new Pac-Man 37s into 37417 and I've got my rake of coaches ready to go as well. The station building is uh, just a little building, there's not much to it at all. But um, yeah, that is essentially what the station building looks like. It's quite an interesting little hut. I don't think there's much actually even goes on in there these days. I think it's an old facility that perhaps used to be a booking office, but um, I don't believe any of it's open at the moment. I do need to perhaps go up there and have a little look at it at some point soon. Um, so this is a more general view of how the sidings will look for me. They're just going to have carriage sidings. You have your multiple units in there, locomotives. Obviously this picture's taken a little bit more recently than the era that I model. And you get the general idea and the feel. Um, so your loco and coach is coming there, it will run round, and then you've got your sidings there. So it looks like there's four sidings at Rumney. We're only gonna have three due to the space constraints that we're working with. There's another shot there of the locomotive that I've um, made, repainted with the coaches so it should provide a fairly nice focal point and uh, yeah so a more general sort of overview there and that's, that's this is the kind of feel that we're going to be going for quite overgrown probably have a little bit of a station car park some nice lights some floodlights down in the sidings around this area and uh, yeah I think hopefully it should provide something interesting so Obviously this is based on Rumney. I am going to think, I think I'm going to call the station Gowerton Parkway just to retain the name of the, um, the, the, the channel and the previous layout. But let me know what you think. But uh, yeah, I think we're going to stick with the name Gowerton Parkway. And yeah, I think you see it should be quite an interesting little project. So let's go ahead now and have a look out at the garage. Okay, so here you can see I've got the first extension board in place and it sits just in front of the fiddle yard. I've incorporated a back seam back board there as well, just to preempt the fact that there's gonna to need to be one there. So that's just sandwiched between the existing baseboard and the new baseboard. 
Uh, all of this is made with 9mm ply tops and I've used the 9mm ply offcuts for the back scene as well. Now if I just zoom out a bit you have to excuse the chaotic state of the uh, garage. You can see here where the uh, workbench is. You can see why now I'm going to have to move that. The workbench is going to come across um, well so the layout will come across where the workbench is. So the workbench now I'm just going to move up into this gap here where my bike is and I'm going to have to try and find a way to rehome my bike but um, there's quite a large corner over here now under the extension where that can probably live so that'll be good um, I have the added benefit as well of moving my workbench just a tad up the way closer to the door so when I'm doing my airbrushing I'll get a little bit more ventilation but yeah as you can see that's where we are there'll be another back seam board there with a cut out for the um, rails to run through and uh, yeah we've got uh, another four foot board to do and then we have to make a two foot board which will give us the full 10 foot length that we require for this track plan Okay, so since the last clip, I've pretty much finished the baseboards now. Um, I've got a back scene running all the way around now, as you can see, and I've put a fascia board across the end there. Like I said, my woodwork in it isn't 100% perfect, but it looks fairly neat, and I think this this here is gonna look all right once it's been painted up nicely. Um, I've cut a little mouse hole in there for the, for the track to come out of. Um, you remember from when we looked at the track plan right at the start of the video it sort of angles out and cuts across the board just to give a little bit more interest and shape so you can see that coming through right. okay guys I've got um we've got the track offered up now as you can see I've got bits and pieces of rolling stock out um, as I was doing it now the reason behind this was just to check that all of my measurements that I put into any rail were, were actually accurate now as I mentioned when we looked at the track plan, we've got a run round loop here and we can comfortably take, luckily, a 37 and the four Mark IVs per the kind of rakes that used to run down on the Welsh Valleys back in the early 2000s, which is ideal. Um, the head shunt here, uh, I've measured out on the again on the software to take one multiple unit uh, so that it can run from this point and then down into these uh, little uh, stable sidings there. Um, on the track plan originally, um, this set of points here were directly attached to this set of points, but when I laid the track out, I think it all looked a bit too cramped. So I'm gonna put a piece of track um, between here and here just to push these out a little bit and give a little bit more space. One thing I absolutely hate with model railways is where people tend to get a big vast expanse and just slam as much track down as possible and um, I, I try my best to avoid that uh, this, this is actually quite a lot of track cramped into one space for me but luckily the prototype was pretty much like that uh, I think the only addition that I've made is adding this bay platform which is something that wouldn't have uh, wouldn't be there on, at Romney but it's it gives me a little bit of a little bit of something else to play with from um, a playability perspective. Otherwise then everything else is sort of loosely offered up. All the tracks loosely laid down. Quite happy now that everything fits and we know that our plan works. Um, I put the rail joiners on some of the track. Uh, annoyingly, I'm, I managed to get myself two insulated rail joiners short for, for these electro frogs, which is a pain so I'm gonna have to buy another pack of those hopefully I can um, head to the model shop on my lunch break tomorrow but um, yeah I think as far as offering everything up goes pretty good one of the things that I really wanted to do is make sure I had plenty of room for scenery a nice big space there um, we'll probably have a station building just at the end of this siding here and that will probably go crossways and uh, then some sort of car park and road kind of access area there um, most likely gonna have a, 
a footpath in that runs down the side there with some sort of crossing or facility for the depot staff to get to, uh, for the train crew to get over to this area. Um, yeah, it's pretty, I'm pretty pleased with it. There's, no, there's not absolutely stacks of room on here for anything flamboyant with scenery, but I want to make sure that what I do do is really quite convincing. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased so far. It's amazing how what seemed like a really big baseball once I'd put it up is suddenly looking a lot smaller once you've got all of your rolling stock and your track sort of loosely offered up on it. But yeah, I think uh, that'll do me for tonight. I'm not going to get much more done. So I need to get my insulated rail joiners to finish off laying the electrofrog points. I will explain how you how you lay an electrofrog point correctly in the next segment of the video. Um, yeah, and then I think I think that'll probably probably be as far as we'll take it for this particular video. So that'll be enough progress. We've looked at a plan, we've built the baseboards, and we've got the first bits of track laid. So slowly coming together. Okay, so I've got the track down now. It's all uh, pinned into place roughly. I put the odd pin in every section just to help it hold its shape. Got it right, use my steel rule to make sure that the straight lines are straight, etc. Uh, it's going to be particularly important for this line where I put the 37 and the Mark IIs in uh, just because obviously I'm going to build a platform alongside that and I don't want any weird kinks in the track. Now I have with this head chunk piece here, if you just let me spin around, slightly curved that there just to give it a little bit of interest and well, it, it just breaks up the straight lines on the board as much as anything. And when I was uh, laying the track, I was experimenting a little bit with moving some bits and pieces of track around into different positions. But I think I've finally settled on this. This is what I'm happy with. And this is th there or thereabouts. I think you'll agree with what was on the track plan that I originally drew up. So it's looking pretty good. I've got plenty of room now to have a think about where to put the scenery. Okay, so my point motors have arrived, and um, this is what I use. It's a Gauge Master GMC PM Ten D. Um, now these are basically seat point motors and they have a DCC decoder attached to them. I'm just going to show you the method that I use for assembling these. So essentially they come in a pack, you've got your point motor which is the part at the bottom here and then the decoder sits on the top of it and then you'll be able to see just there there's a pin for the point motor lever that comes through. So. Uh, the way that I set these up, now I'll just set these pieces aside for the moment. These are, um, this is this is basically a link that goes between the decoder and the point motor. So you just pop that onto here and then you run that to here and you'll see now that the point motor and the decoder are linked together. So there's a little step that I go through for mounting these on my layout. Now, in this package here, you get a couple of screws uh, for screwing the point motor to the bottom of your baseboard, which I don't use, and then an extended uh, an extension for the pin, for the DCC. So, sorry, an extension for the pin for for the point um, for the point motor that go through the DCC decoder. So, you got this pin. What I will do there is just use a little bit of super glue on the bottom of the pin and then goes into this little sort of linking piece there, I don't know the camera will pick it up and focus and then that um, basically slots onto your uh, onto your point motor, it goes through the decoder so I then just take a cocktail stick if I can find one let's see if I've got one in the drawer next to me Talk amongst yourselves while I scrabble for that. There we go. So just take a little bit of super glue, pop it on the end of there, and then we just sort of ream the inside of that piece there, and that link piece is connected. And I then connect, pop that onto the pin. So we've now got our point motor and the pin ready for it to go through. 
Now to mount these under the layout, it's quite simple. They use a uh, sort of your normal standard seat point motor on there that you'll see. So I use these Pico mounting plates, they're the PL9 mounting plates. And what I tend to do with these, um, I get these all prepped and fitted to the coder before going anywhere near the layout with them. So you got a little slot there. Now what I like to do with these normally is just check that's all done. That's all freely moving there. And then I pop the mounting plate, easier said than done, onto the decoder. So there we are, we have the mounting plate there ready to go. Now, one of the challenges of mounting these, um, I say challenges, it's not really a challenge. It's more of a challenge if you're just, uh, if there's just one person mounting these, it's me, it's just me doing this layout, so I don't really have any help with it, is to try and stick them to the bottom of your baseboard um, and get them positioned without them moving. So I'll just show you a quick little trick that I use now. So what I do, I put these self-tapping screws into the mounting plate before I do anything much more. Um, the motors are supplied with these screws, but it's a lot easier to use these little self-tapping screws when you're trying to fit them underneath the baseboard yourself. Um, I then place the mounting plate uh, onto the decoder again. Get that in there. It's easier said than done. The little arms on there are a bit bent. There we go. Right, so that's all on there. Got that sorted. Um, next thing to do is I use a couple of little balls of blue tack, uh, black tack. Now, the reason behind this is this stuff's quite good and it'll allow me to actually be able to push this up against the baseboard and this will hold, it will stick to the bottom of the baseboard with these two little bits of black tack and allow me to position the point motor decoder and then I can um, I can tighten it all up with the screws. So I'll show you what I mean now over on the layout. Uh, this is the last point motor I've got to fit. I fitted all of the others already before going ahead and filming this segment. Okay, so I'm back over at the layout now and I'm ready to fit this point motor. Now, earlier in the video we drilled holes um, underneath all of these point motors um, ready for fitment. Now, what I'm going to have a look to do here is I'll show you how I go ahead and actually fit these motors. So, got this. All I'll look to do is find the hole and pop the pin through. Now, I'll then move the arm around holding the point motor still so that I know that it's moving to its full extremities and that will give me the position for the point motor. So I'm pretty confident that's there. Hopefully, I'm, <laughs> what I'm describing makes sense, but let me just push this home and then I'll move the camera and show you underneath what I've got. Okay, so here you can see the point motor, it's roughly offered up, it's literally tacked in at the moment. It's held, not very well in place, but in position and enough for me then to be able to screw. And I know that, that motor's been offered up correctly. So hopefully my fitting method seemed to work um, and you could understand it. All I've done there is just made sure that the point motor will travel and we know there, we can see there, the point motor rod, whatever you want to call it, goes through the points and it moves quite Okay, nice. so the next item to prepare for the layout extension are the auto frogs. Now these change the polarity on the, on the electro frog points. Um, I'm not big up on electrics. I don't, couldn't explain to you how the hell they work. I just know we need them. Um, so essentially where you've got the V part of the, an electro frog point, um, there's no insulated V join uh, and you have two opposite polarities clashing with one another. And these little devices take care of that. Now, they are super simple to use. Um, even I can get my head around these. Uh, the part number is a BP DCC 80 auto frog and you get three of these in a pack or you can buy them individually. To wire them we simply put um, one wire to the bus, one wire, another wire to the bus, positive and negative side and a third wire um, which goes to the frog. Now ideally this third wire just to keep things clean 
I would use a third colour wire rather than repeating the use of black. But luckily when you mount these under the layout it's pretty obvious which ones should go to the frog because you've got two coming out of one side and one coming out the middle of the other side. So all I'm doing at the moment is screwing these up underneath the layout. I've not actually built the bus wire yet, I'm getting everything in position and then I will apply so the So I've finally finished my wiring underneath the layout. Now this does need a lot of tidying up, I've got cable ties and things that'll get everything leaned up slightly so everything's quite loosely in place but my wiring as a whole is pretty crap to be honest, I'm not the best wirer. Um, I just try to keep it as simple as possible. I've used the copper strips there to create the bus wire and then everything has a positive and a negative feed back to that bus wire. It's all really easy to trace where everything goes, it saves using chock blocks and things like that. So I'm really pleased that with, with the simplicity of it, the presentation is awful but nobody goes under there except me. And I know that, that the entire of YouTube can laugh at my wiring now but there we go. It is functional and it will work. Um, so you've got now essentially going back to the bus wire You've got your droppers um, that come down from the layout and feed all the track. You have got a positive and negative wire from each of the frog juicers that go back to the bus wire and then a positive and negative wire that go from the DCC point motor back to the bus wire. And that is everything there. It's all functional and it works. I now can go above the layout, have a little bit of a tidy up and lean up and get everything tested. Hopefully it will work. Okay, so I've had a good tidy up on the layout now, or the new part of the layout, and got everything sorted. So all, where there was all the little gaps in the sleepers where the track had been laid, they've all now been filled in. So you've got consistent sleepers running across there. I put in a couple of the scale model scenery orange cable trunking tubes there just to make things a little bit more interesting. And I've put some stock out on the layout just to do a little bit of testing. Uh, I've got some, I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with the scenic break at the end there. I'd rather not go for another bridge because I've already got two bridges for scenic breaks on the layout. So I've put some boxes there just to see if I can block it off with a big building. Uh, the current thought is at the end of the sidings, the stabling sidings where the units go, I'm going to have a look at perhaps building a warehouse or something. So I'll just, um, there you go, turn the lights on on the pacers so we know that that's working. And um, the points, again, they all... They've all been wired incorrectly and seem to work, which is good. Uh, my, my wiring, I hate, absolutely hate wiring, but I've done this a few times now and this all worked uh, bang on first time, so it was quite good. Uh, I was pleased with that. So if we have a little look there, we can see that the point motors will, should, should change. There we go. You just see the point in the bottom left of your screen flicking. Um, these are all the, the Gage Master solenoid points, they're not slow action ones. Um, a lot of people prefer slow action point motors and I certainly agree that they probably are better visually than what I've used. But in the garage, we've got this part of the layout here. We've obviously got the main layout there. There's often quite a bit of DCC sound going on. So to hear the points clicking over is reassuring when I'm, uh, when I'm running trains out. So um, I will quickly demonstrate to you a train running through this particular part of the layout so these are the double paces these are the real track ones really pleased with these models they're actually significantly better I think than EFE's rehash of the pacer I had an EFE pace at the Valley Lines one, but it went back because it was just such an atrocious runner. But as you can see, these seem to run quite nicely. Now, one of the, one uh, little thing that I want to do now is just quickly, if I quickly run that out, I can show you show you them exiting, and then we'll probably leave leave the video at that. It's time afterwards to do some scenery, and um, that'll be when the next video kicks in. But I'll just quickly run these out so you can see. quite nice to actually have um, a bit of point work that the trains can snake over now so they're gone and they basically run around the back there 
and they should hopefully come out on the main line there. And then off they'll go on their way around the layout. So yeah, I'm really pleased with the way this has um, come together so far. So I'll just stop that there and I will uh, I'll run the set back wrong road um, just so you can see. Oh, I don't know why it's a little bit stuck then. I'll run the run the set back wrong road just so you can see it, how it will look entering. So obviously this will be on the on the correct road normally. But that'll run across there. And we'll see it pop out from there in just a moment. Normally the platform road would be empty and they would go into the platforms, but I've got the, the loco and stock in there at the moment. So we'll just run it into the into the run around loop. But yeah, everything is tested and working quite nicely. Um, one thing that I don't think I've mentioned yet in this video, this has been filmed over a course of about a month or so, is the fact that there's no um, underlay under the track because this is a station terminus I don't really need a ballast shoulder so I've gone straight down onto the baseboards so get that out of the way and I guess I guess I could quickly run the loco out as well while we're at it so you can you can see it but what I'll do is I will get him started up and start running him I'll put the sound on now he's away I think the effect of those disappearing behind the building or the boxes, potential building there is okay. I basically want to cut off the view of the sharp turn as it comes out, but there you go, we're out onto the main line now, ready for... So I'll stop that there. And yeah, just a quick view back there. You can see the platform so far. I'm gonna start building in the topography next, get this all sort of offered up um, how I want it. But the sound's just come back on 37. I don't know why, if anybody knows this actually. Lego Man Biffo sound files. If you drive a train and you stop it and you turn the sound off, it will then do a random shutdown cycle after the train stops. Really weird. Anyway, um, if I digress, yeah. So this is where we are. Um, I think pretty happy with the progress. Time to get into the fun stuff now of the scenery. So I'll build that all up, start filming the video and once I've got enough to to share with people, we'll come back to you, come back to you. But I think the next step is gonna to be to build up the landform around the platform um, and then get the track weathered and then we'll be ready to look at ballasting and planning exactly what we're gonna put in various places where the blue Buckman box is. I'm potentially thinking of having a signal box there. Um, this is based sort of on a, an old sort of 2000s Romney-esque kind of thing. Um, but yeah, like I said earlier in the video, I want to call this Gallatin Parkway. If any, I, I, I think that's probably the best thing to do with it. Keeps to the theme of the layout and keeps to the theme of the channel, keeps the name. Um, I didn't really want to let that name die completely so we'll still probably call the station Galton Parkway that should tie everything back in then but it'll be a very different Galton Parkway station to the one we saw before but anyway thank you very much for sitting and looking at this video I know it's been a long one I appreciate your time so yeah thanks very much and I'll speak to you all again soon